Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the series of Know Your Rights uh, with uh, Maurice Blackburn Lawyers. And of course, we have seen a few uh, different uh, topics that's been covered, uh, and it is always uh, in community interest that we bring to you lots of uh, the topics which are of interest. And today, we will be talking uh, with Alison Barrett, the Queensland Head of Public Liability. Alison Barrett is a principal lawyer at Maurice Blackburn's Queensland and Northern Territories uh, practices, and she visits several offices across the state. She is a Queensland Law Society accredited specialist with over 15 years experience helping people with legal claims. That's a great experience there. A Gold Coast local, Alison holds Bachelor of Arts with major in psychology and honours in law. Alison joined the firm while she was still completing her studies and was admitted as a solicitor in 2006. At Maurice Blackburn, Alison quickly progressed through the ranks to principal in 2014. She currently oversees seven officers and is part of the North Injuries Leadership Team. Alison also uh, is an integral part in establishing the Northern Territory practice and oversees the Darwin office as well. And she has a lot of uh, membership, so Queensland Law Society member, uh, Queensland Law Society accredited specialist, Australian Lawyers Alliance member, and Gold Coast District Law Association member. Uh, and of course, is one the awards as well. Queensland Law Society is specialist, accredited, highest achiever in 2014. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we'd like to welcome uh, to the show, Alison. Welcome. Thank you. And it's and it's wonderful to have you here in the studios today. Uh, and uh, as we talked about uh, in previous episodes about many different aspects of injuries and uh, the section that we're going to cover today is more on the road so you know uh, in injured on the road so Alison first of all if you could you know tell our listeners and viewers what rights people have you know if they are injured in a car accident in Queensland, we've got a system of compulsory third-party insurance. So the acronym for that is CTP. You might hear me talk about CTP. Um, and that insurance is compulsory. So you ha when we register our vehicles in Queensland, it's paid with our registration. There's a registration fee and an insurance fee. And what that means is that when you're involved in an accident on the road, um, when it's not your fault, you're entitled to lodge a claim against a vehicle that is at fault. Um, just probably one thing to note there, this concept of fault, so the lawyer's word for that is negligence, but there are some situations where someone might be at fault and they suffer from quite a catastrophic or a very serious injury like a brain injury or an amputation or um, a paraplegic type injury. There's, for those very serious injuries, there's still some compensation entitlements for people to be able to access through that scheme, even if the access it was their fault. So uh, that is wonderful that there are so many the points that are covered in there. So you know when we look at accidents, uh, you know, uh, you know accidents, accidents. So they could be, they come in all types and forms. So what type of accidents are covered? Again, all different types. It's very, very broad coverage. The the first and most obvious sort of coverage is for any. Um, an accident involving any vehicle that's registered. So think about a bus, if you're on a bus, um, in a car, a motorbike. There's also other certain types of um, motor vehicles that are required to be registered that you wouldn't expect. So for example, a forklift, um, certain types of heavy machinery, golf buggies. We've seen people injured in golf buggy accidents. Um, even some motorized um, scooters or wheelchairs re are required to be registered. So if there is an accident, involving one of those vehicles that's registered and it's their fault anyone that's injured can bring a claim and there's also a special policy um, because sometimes unfortunately people don't keep up to date with their registration which means that their insurance coverage isn't covered so in those situations there's also some entitlements for um, unregistered vehicles and uninsured vehicles um, under this special policy 
you, some of these situations though are not straightforward at all so my rule of thumb is if it has wheels if a vehicle has wheels it's definitely worthwhile investigating to see if there is any insurance coverage and what someone's rights might be if they're injured in an accident well that is uh, uh, wonderfully said that if it's got wheels uh, you, it's better be registered so uh, and one of the points that uh, slightly off the track uh, here uh, is uh, you know talking about wheels and you've slightly uh, you know touched on that uh, the scooters and you know these days we have the e-scooters running around the city as well uh, uh, the, i know uh, this is the slightly off the track but you know how are they covered yeah, that's a very, very important question. Um, unfortunately, we actually haven't seen the law keep up to date with the introduction of e-scooters. And this um, compulsory third party scheme doesn't apply to e-scooters, unfortunately. So someone to be if someone's injured um, because of an e-scooter, so a pedestrian might be injured because of an e-scooter driver not taking care, they would have to personally sue the, the rider of that e-scooter, which can be very difficult because often and there's not um, any sort of insurance or funds that sits behind that. So quite often um, it's a sad situation where the injured person doesn't have any recourse. It can be really, really tricky. Yes, uh, and many times when you see those people running around on those e-scooters, they're like uh, accident, uh, you know, waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, and of course, when we look at, uh, uh, you know, scooters, or we've looked at uh, the types uh, of, uh, uh, the, you know, accidents that are covered, uh, of course, that uh, what, that what that leads to is that there could be many different kinds of injuries as well. So what types of injuries are covered? Uh, pretty much everything. Um, so anything from a physical injury like a fracture or um, a head injury. We often see um, people who suffer from brain injuries in accidents, which is a very sad situation. Um, whiplash injuries too. So often people, you can't see an injury on a scan, but people can suffer from quite significant and ongoing soft tissue sort of injuries. Um, often we people will suffer from uh, a psychological injury injury so an impact on their emotional um, stability and stress um, that's not just for um, because they've been in an accident but that can also apply to someone who's witnessed an accident um, it can be very very traumatic and that can be covered probably one of the misconceptions that people have is that if they've had a previous injury in the past whether it be from work or in any other sort of situation if they've re-injured that part of their body that they can't make a claim but that's not the case at all so they can um, pursue a claim for an aggravation of an injury uh, and then probably the final thing to mention um, is there are claims for fatal injury so the saddest situation of all if someone does die um, in any vehicle accident they're dependent so people who were relying on them for financial or emotional support are entitled to bring a claim against any at fault driver and the vehicle Right, so there's such a, a vast field out there, as you have just rightfully mentioned, uh, and lots of the areas to be looked at and, uh, and the way the things are covered. So looking at all those coverage, uh, uh, in, you know, broadly, uh, as you have mentioned, that any car vehicle uh, uh, that's involved in an accident, you know, basically with the third party, with the CTP, they are covered. So. Uh, but uh, if you look at people, who is actually covered? Again, another long list. Um, so anyone that anyone who was involved in an accident when it wasn't their fault so it could be someone sitting in the back seat of a car a passenger a driver of a vehicle um, it can be a pedestrian crossing the road um, and a vehicle comes and collides with them you mentioned those e-scooter riders before um, e-scooter riders and cyclists are very vulnerable on the road because they don't have the protection of a vehicle so they are covered if a vehicle collides doesn't take care and then collides with them as well um, and then I've obviously mentioned witnesses to traumatic accidents as well they have coverage okay so uh, the looking at those uh, the, you know coverages and when people are covered uh, so uh, looking at the entitlements right now so you know what is the injured person's uh, entitlement what are they actually entitled to 
Um, once an injured per person actually lodges a claim, the first and the most important thing that they're entitled to is to get the insurance company to pay for money for their rehabilitation. So that can include things like visits to the GP, specialists, surgery might be recommended, um, sometimes counselling, um, anything that they have to pay out of their own pocket, medication, travel expenses, all that sort of thing should be covered and paid for up front. Um, it's really important that people lodge these claims early so that they can get good access to early rehabilitation so that they can maximise um, their outcomes and get better and get back to work or get back to their um, usual life. Um, so the insurer definitely does cover all of that up front. And that's important too because um, sometimes when this sort of thing occurs, people can't work so they don't have a steady income coming in. We can't claim income loss initially, but what we do is we go through a claims process so that at the end, they'll also be entitled to compensation for things like income and superannuation loss um, and money for pain and suffering as well. Often these injuries unfortunately have lifelong effects on people, so they're entitled to money for pain and suffering for that. Uh, and then also money for the future. So, you know, a doctor might say they might need to go and have regular physio for the next 10 years or throughout the course of their life they may not be able to work full time. So they'll be entitled to compensation for their weight, lost wages into the future. Right. So, uh, you know, looking at uh, all of those, uh, and uh, there are so many different scenarios and there's so much we can cover in this segment here. But of course we know that, you know, a rule of thumb is uh, if you get involved in an, ex in an accident, that you need, the, you need to get the details of the other driver. B, whoever is at fault, it's, it's another matter. But, uh, you know, the point is that people really need to uh, exchange uh, de contact details and, of course, uh, the uh, details of the other driver and the other car. What happens if, you know, you didn't get the chance and, you know, you were too shaken and whatever and you didn't get the details of the other car or the driver? That's a good question and sometimes we also see that the other driver doesn't wait and they'll drive off and flee the scene of the accident. Um, so the first thing to do in any situation is obviously someone needs to make sure that they're safe and um, go and get medical treatment firstly but putting that aside in terms of reporting the accident it still needs to be reported to the police as soon as possible. If the police are able to attend the scene that's much better. Um, photos of your vehicle if the vehicle's been injured then there might be other witnesses, even if you can't get the dri other driver's details, there might be witnesses. So most definitely get their name and contact details and address. And then um, it's really important in these situations to get legal advice fairly quickly too, particularly for those hit and run sort of accidents, because there's quite a few investigations that um, lawyers would need to do to find the other driver. So that can include all different sorts of things. There's, you know, there's been occasions where we will door knock local businesses to find out if they've got CCTV footage or if they happen to witness the accident. Um, you know, if if say we know it was a, a particular type of work ute, that work ute might drive past the accident at the same time every day. So we might keep an eye on the in the coming weeks to see if the same work ute's being driven past with some damage on it. Um, we'd contact local council and local government to get access to any CCTV. TV footage of the roads because it is really important for us to do quick investigations um, to try and identify the vehicle. Even if it's not identified, um, someone can still lodge a claim. It's just a bit trickier and we need to properly make sure that we've exhausted all avenues to try and identify that vehicle. And uh, Alison, you have quite well covered that, but you know, in conclusion, do you have any tips or what should people do when they get in an accident? Yeah, like I said, um, definitely go to a doctor. Uh, one of, that's really important, particularly um, when someone suffers an accident. You know, it can be quite embarrassing and um, they may not want to admit that they're in pain or sometimes people don't feel the effects of injury straight away. It might happen over the coming days. They tend to get worse. Um, but even in that situation, someone should still go to their doctor and get checked out and report it to their GP immediately, even if they don't have any symptoms, because like I said, things can get worse. Obviously, take photos of the scene, photos of the other vehicle, exchanging details. We've already had a chat about that, getting the police involved. Um, 
and you know it's great with smartphones now people can take video footage of the area so we can get a bit of an idea about what the lighting might have been like and what the conditions were on the road um, obviously people need to make sure that they're safe and capable of doing that but that sort of thing is very helpful and that is very very important uh, so there you are ladies and gentlemen uh, you know time is of the essence but as we know under those conditions many times people uh, you know might not be stable and uh, uh, you know as Alison has rightfully mentioned that the safety is comes first first of all make sure that everyone's safe uh, and as was discussed uh, do seek medical advice Number three, make sure you get legal advice as well if you are in any sort of uh, doubt as well. So, you know, looking at all of those, uh, Alison, how does Maurice Blackburn come in and how can Maurice Blackburn help? Uh, I always say to people there's absolutely no harm in just picking up the phone and having a chat. We always provide um, any, any person a free initial consultation um, and it's, there's certainly no harm in having a conversation. Our lawyers are very good, we don't speak you know, really complicated legal language, we're very approachable and we'll talk someone through their options and there's no obligation to do that just to know where you stand. There are very important time limits so the quicker someone can pick up the phone and have a chat with one of our lawyers um, that's very useful or if you know we've got 13 offices like you said in the intro many offices across Queensland um, so you can pop into any office and have a chat with one of our lawyers just for people to understand where they where they stand so there you are ladies and gentlemen it is very very important uh, and because uh, the, you know the first initial consultation does not cost you anything uh, but it can be very very helpful so pick up the phone find out you will actually know where you stand what what you can do and in because each and every case might be different so you know what you've heard just from friends might be quite different so you know it is very it is advisable pick up that phone and uh, uh, you know get in touch so Alison once again thank you so much for being on the show uh, and sharing this very very important uh, message uh, with uh, all our viewers and listeners today and I'm, I'm pretty sure that it will be very helpful to many within our community and uh, community at large uh, because it is an area where you know people sometimes seems to uh, seem to know certain things but they might not know the full extent and what is right to do uh, in those circumstances so once again thank you so much for being on the show thank you